Thank you. Since it's been 50 years, let me just give you a brief overview of what our Freedom Ride was like so that you can kind of understand it with us, experience it with us, okay? We went down 11 of us from Los Angeles on August 9th, 1961, and we arrived in Houston on August 11th. We were arrested, hauled off in small, pale blue uh, buses uh, to jail. When we were in the room being photographed and fingerprinted, we were told we were going to be beaten up, which, by the way, is not a piece of news that I particularly welcome. <laughs> All right? I mean, I didn't say to him, I come from a pretty tough neighborhood in New York, but I didn't say, okay, I'm ready for that. <laughs> you know, I said to myself, oh hell, here we go. <laughs> And we were separated by race and sex. The whole jail was separated by race and sex. And at about 2 o'clock in the morning, we were taken up into the white male misdemeanor tank. The tank was organized uh, according to a group of prisoners who ran and controlled the entire tank. They ran the tank with an iron fist. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, they proceeded to beat us up. And they beat us up for a couple of hours. Now, my beating was not, you know, a very nice experience, but it was not as bad as Steve Sandfield's beating was, okay? It was a bad beating, but it wasn't a terrible beating, okay? Something I don't want to experience again, yes. <laughs> But, you know, I was able to get up the next morning. The right side of my face, I'd been kicked in my face, was completely swollen. And interestingly enough, the, uh, the prisoners walked up to us and basically told us, that's it. You have nothing else to worry about. And they made it clear that it was the guards who told them to beat us up. And that's the only reason we were beaten up. Now, we got along for a couple of days. We survived, largely through our wits, thanks to Bob Kaufman, probably more than anybody else, our so-called spokesman, nearly our leader. And our, our approach was to separate out, stay separate, don't get involved with any of the prisoners, don't do, get too close with any of the prisoners, don't get too tight with them, don't cause any problems, don't make any waves. And everything went pretty well, although there wasn't, you know, there were times when it wasn't quite that, that simple. However, uh, the following night, two nights after we were arrested, our black attorney named George Washington Jr. showed up at the tank. And Bob Kaufman was led forth to meet him. There was a little hole at the front of the tank. And Bob was clever enough to sort of turn his head this way so that George could see the gash on the left side of his, of his head. And George said, what happened to your head? What happened to your head? And Garland, who was called the commander, burst out, blew it, burst out of his cell, started running around the tank, screaming, we beat, pardon my language, we beat the shit out of them, we beat the shit out of them, and if we want to, we'll beat the shit out of them again. And why don't you come in here so we can beat the shit out of you? Another experience that I didn't particularly enjoy, okay? That didn't exactly appeal to me. But Steve Sanfield and I shrunk against the bars, looked at each other and said, this is it. And fortunately, and the night superintendent came into the, the walkway right that bordered the tank, called Garland over, who was really, and he was really berserk. I mean, he wasn't just hacking this. I mean, this was serious on his part. He called Garland over, and after, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, talked him down. And if he hadn't done that, who knows what would have happened. And as it happened, Garland wound up screaming, 
all right, okay, you know, I won't do anything to them, but if they touch me, if they come at me, I'll, I'll kill them. And the bottom line is we were bailed out that night. Some of you may see the picture downstairs of the four of us, three of the four of us, in the Roosevelt Hospital emergency room. And as a result of that experience, I've had a herniated disc for my entire life which uh, had the effect, among others, of uh, getting me out of the draft. So <laughs> not everything was bad, okay? But that, in a nutshell, is what happened. And that's what caused me to get deeply involved in the civil rights movement, really, for the rest of my life.